Welcome back to the new shop. Today we have a treat especial. We are going to machine some castings and this is in collaboration with Amateur Redneck Workshop. Um, Harold actually contacted me a while ago and he wanted me to uh, print out some 3D printing molds so you can actually cast them into metal and today's project is actually where we're going to be making a tap guide. Uh, these things are actually ungodly expensive uh, to buy from reputable places and it uh, looks like a fairly simple machine so we decided to, or I should say it was Harold's idea that he wanted to cast one up and do a collaboration with me. Um, unfortunately for me he's already done his video and I, it took me a very long time to actually get to this point where I'm actually um, able to machine these castings. I've gotten these over a month ago, I guess. Um, and by the way, Happy New Year. This is uh, January 3rd. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming. And um, first I want to show you the castings, then I'm going to cut into a old video that I shot where I show what the 3D prints look like uh, before the casting was done and if you want to actually see the actual casting process and Harold's way of machining this there's a link in the description go follow his channel um, subscribe to his channel he's a good guy um, actually it's a very interesting um, content that he makes. I've been a long time follower of his. Um, so yeah, without further ado, this is the castings. These are the castings, I should say. And as you can see, uh, there's a sprue that he cut off and uh, the top of it is a little, can I say this, it's a little rough, but it's it's actually overall it's a very nice casting. Uh, I have some professional casting kits that I haven't cracked open yet. It's actually right underneath here and that will be another project for another day but they haven't they, they're just about the same kind of casting so kudos Harold you did a really nice job at least uh, as far as I can tell uh, this is the arm uh, that Harold cast and I guess as, as you can see it's Amateur Redneck Workshop this is the top of it and Engineer 3D uh, the, the D is a little cut off, but that's okay. Um, I did make a few mistakes. This is the first time I've ever designed anything for casting purposes. And um, these angles are a little bit too steep. It should have been more closer to straight. And um, yeah, and the other mistake was the angles over here. There are none. This is a sharp 90 degree. Although here there are angles and here there are angles, um, here there are not, so that's the reason why some of it crumbled and it hurt the D on there, which is fine. Uh, I think these will machine up beautifully. I know Harold's set uh, machined up wonderfully. I mean, really, I recommend, again, link in the description. Go watch that video first and come back to this one. Um, he did an awesome job casting these and I can't believe it went from a 3D print that was barely had any infill to something that has actually some pretty good gravity to it. I haven't weighed this stuff but I wouldn't be surprised if it's five or six pounds worth of aluminum here or more. So without further ado, I'm going to cut in to the portion of the video where I actually introduced the actual 3D prints so you guys can actually see uh, the, the, the the design process that went into making this and then we can go in and start machining these on, in my workshop here. So I wanted to show you guys uh, the design process as well as the actual um, build process and finishing process for um, parts that will ultimately be sand cast. Um, these 3D printed parts will be used as the uh, the molds uh, they will they will leave impressions in sand. Uh, these molds will get pulled out, and aluminum is going to get poured in. I suppose you could pour in brass or steel or 
cast iron as well um, but the process should be about the same anytime you do make a casting you do need to uh, give the walls an edge so basically you need to slope them in a certain angle personally I'm not sure what that angle is I kinda eyeballed it when I designed these parts and everything is actually designed in multiple pieces so the feet on this are also removable and I will go through the design process as well but this is the base that will get cast in, as one piece and you may say why are you casting a base that's half inch thick you could just as easily buy a piece of aluminum probably uh, but the arm for it will be cast and you might as well cast the whole thing and yes this whole thing can be made out of plates or you can make it out of solid pieces but uh, this is a collaboration between Amateur Redneck Workshop and myself so his Harold's uh, logo is here mine is here and everything is made in two pieces I will show you a trick on how to uh, design this part only halfway and get a mirror part in the slicer so you don't actually have to do double the work even though this actually has a logo on this side and it doesn't have it on this side I decided to leave it blank there's a pretty large boss over here that will accept a bushing of some sort and this will be a tab guide uh, once it comes out of the sand there will be two pieces this will get machined flat I'm sure this will get machined flat as well there will be a whole board into this side with a guide bushing pressed in and some sort of tap wrench that holds this so you can actually tap or I should say yeah you can tap um, whatever you need to tap in a square fashion right you put it here and then you drive it down they do make this as a commercially available tool it's ungodly expensive for a US built one um, while I do understand why it costs so much um, it's out of our budget so this was a fun project for Harold to get to do some casting and myself do some uh, 3D designs he's the one who approached me for this I can't wait to uh, see what he comes up with Now it's time to put this in the CNC router. Fire up the pump. And let's fixture this thing in. One, two, three block. I have something that's somewhat straight. These are T nuts that uh, I actually milled with this machine. They're just aluminum T nuts made out of pieces of scrap. actually cutting inside of the enclosure uh, so the noise should be much reduced compared to what it is you can actually hear the difference
And again, this is a two fluid carbide end mill. The router is done, left a fairly reasonable finish, both sides are done, there's a few inclusions, uh, these are going to get filled up before paint, now it's time to clean out the edges, cut this off using Harold's favorite tool, which is the bandsaw. One of the advantages of having a wood bench is you get a vice and a vice. So it's two vices. I haven't transferred over my large vice to the new shop yet, so this is going to have to do. See properly, yes, you can. Well, a lot of work, work went into milling this plate. And now it's flat, and the, the edges are reasonable. I kept the draft angle the same as everything that we had, and just cleaned out the edges, cleaned out some of the casting marks. I'm actually quite happy with this, and one of the things that's going to happen, I think at the very end, we're going to get some rubber feet. I had these laying around, so... I may as well use them. Uh, it'll prevent it from skidding around. Next up, I have to start machining the arm. And I was looking at this and the only critical part that we have to machine is this. I have to make it flat, of course. It has to be square with the column in both X and Y directions. So I have to think about the setup for this. Um, my horizontal mill would probably be the best approach to do this but that's not in the new shop. I haven't brought that over yet. Um, I'll see maybe I'll take a drive out to the old shop and bring the camera equipment and mill this off or I may try doing it with my vertical mill or I may try to do it with my CNC mill or router I should say we'll see but for now I'm gonna take a file to all of this flashing I've already cut off most of it using uh, Harold's favorite tool a bandsaw and I'm just gonna go to town and just clean a lot of this off with a uh, file. I think it's, uh, it's it's very therapeutic to quote Tom Lipton. So. I ended up milling the sides of the arm uh, the end mill just won't reach all the way down to actually make this straight. It looks like I will be taking it over to my horizontal mill at the other shop and slicing this off and then this arm will be ready. One of the funny things about this milling operation actually, I used a CNC machine but I operated it manually. So 
So that's kind of weird. Just set the feed speed and just jogged it around until I milled both sides. It was actually faster than letting it run through a can cycle. And I didn't really feel like running, creating a pool, tool path with a uh, fusion. For this. I'm quite happy with the results. Uh, now I have reference points on both sides um, that are very sharp. They're probably going to cut me. Uh, I'm going to run a file and break these edges, but now I have reference points on both sides. I should be able to actually clamp this in my other milling machine and just face this flat. And based on this datum, I should be able to actually come in and drill this one as well. So uh, I think it's rather interesting. Um, I'm happy with the result. Doesn't rock. I used a couple of uh, one, two, three blocks that just so happened to be right around the proper height for this vise as well. So this is was this vise was one of those um, Craigslist scores. Uh, I needed a vise for this machine, so I found one very inexpensively, and turns out it's actually a rather decent uh, device. I should say it's a rather decent vise.